Hello and welcome to UCL Global Health. Democracy is a fundamental part of the modern state, but what does it mean in emerging and so-called failed states like Somalia? I'm joined by Michael Walls, who's Director of Research at the UCL Development Planning Unit, and he's done a lot of work in Somalia. Michael, um, you know, democracy gets a bad name in many states, uh, corruption, nepotism, rigging. Do, do you think uh, people in Somalia understand democracy in the same way as perhaps we do? I think they understand democracy very well, but not in the same way. So that's the, that's the critical point. Somali tradition is strongly democratic. It's strongly egalitarian for men and democratic. But it's a for men. For men, yeah, yeah that's pretty important. Um, but it's a discursive kind of democracy. So it means that people sit around a long, for a long time talking about things, and coming to some kind of consensus-based decision before they vote on anything. So it's not an election-based democracy. Elections are, if anything, an adjunct to to the democratic process, and that actually causes problems because the, the outside world looks at it and thinks of democracy without questioning what it is. They just, we just assume we have this idea of democracy, which is all about elections. And for Somalis, that's a problem. For Somali men in particular, but not just men, um, the difference in understandings is quite fundamental. So for Somalis, it feels like a loss of democratic um, input to vote for someone who then goes and makes decisions on your part. Because yeah. the tradition is, you make the decisions together. Now, that has problems in a nation-state context because it takes a long time to make those kinds of decisions. And it's very hard to, to present a, a unified face when you're undertaking trade negotiations or you know, interstate negotiations. So there are real problems with that kind of consensus-based democracy in terms of its practicality in a world that's dominated by nation-states. But it's still democracy. You kind of have two parallel systems, don't you, in, in many countries in Africa, where you have the traditional village headman group, village headman system, mm. and then you have imposed on that the sort of democratic system. But the two don't always meet, do they? And the customary law of the local decision-making process seems to be dominant. Yeah. And that, you're saying, is a good thing, or does it discriminate you? I mean, women are not too happy about that. Yeah. They? So, I mean, I'm not saying per se that it's a good thing, I'm saying that's the fact, that's what's yeah. there, and you have to build on what's there. So we have to understand what's there if we're going to be a part of any kind of process. And I think there is a place for outsiders to be a part of politics in any country, um, written with a small p or a very big one, I'm not sure. Um, but you have to understand what you're dealing with. And I think that the international community, if there is such a thing, um, really gets that wrong consistently in, in the Somali context. So are you saying that a free and fair election in the Western sense could actually undermine the development of Somalia? It certainly or can, yeah. Um, and the effort to try and create so-called free and fair elections has undermined that process in the past. Um, we've got a situation in Puntland at the moment, which is in the northeast of Somalia, um, where they're looking at holding elections of their own, and they want to do it under a, a sort of fairly, you know, Western traditional model of election, free and fair kind of one person, one vote elections. And that is a real threat at the moment that that will do more to undermine the peace in, in Puntland than to consolidate it. Really? So, so that leads on to the next question, which is, Everyone's focusing on Mogadishu as the capital of this grand new country. Is it a country? I mean, you've got Somaliland, you've got Puntland, who are secessionist, aren't they? Is this another colonially imposed geography that perhaps shouldn't be considered as one country? There's no question it's a colonial, colonially imposed geography. Um, the Whether it should or shouldn't be, I guess, is now a, a kind of history historic question which we're left with a position where that is the that's the shape of the the bit of what is supposed to be room for a nation state somehow now we Somalis have to solve that it's in their interest to do so so they're starting from what is unfortunately a real politic position where those colonial borders are a, a fact in some degree now whether that means that what is left that sort of seven shape at the Horn of Africa whether that is a country is a really good question um, to date, it's not. 
it has never been. And that, that, that argument makes a number of Somalis very, very unhappy, um, who feel that the, the sanctity of the unity of the sovereign state of Somalia is, um, is essential. And that's certainly what the Somalia constitution says. But the reality is, it has never been a reality. It has never been a practicality. So, is there is there hope for a federal structure, a bit like Nigeria? A lot of the a lot of the debate in Somalia now, um, and I, let's say the Somali Horn Horn of Africa, because it certainly extends to Somaliland and, and the Somali regions in Ethiopia and elsewhere. Um, but a lot of the debate is about what is the nature of of the Somali sort of union or. Um, the Somali identity in the Horn of Africa. And in the Somali, Somalia context, that it takes the form of what does federalism mean? Yeah. So there's, there's a big debate, and it's a very, very deep and heated debate between the Mogadishu government, who has an idea of a federal state that's quite centralised and, and quite unitary, quite close to a unitary um, state, against the Puntland version or the Jubaland version now, um, which is a much looser federation, right. through to Somaliland, which has declared unilateral yeah. independence. Finally, are you optimistic? I mean, th there is a lot of optimism around after the disaster of the last, you know, th is it three decades since Shad Barry? Well, s since on. 1991, yeah. Yeah, two, two. two of it. Yeah. Um, are you optimistic? I mean, a lot of Somalians are going back. There seems to be a lot of economic activity going on. Uh, are you, do you share that optimism? Um, in a lot of ways, I share an optimism, um, and the reason a lot of people are going back is because the Somali economy is dynamic. Uh, it's growing very fast, and that's Mogadishu and also Hargeisa, um, other Somali cities. But the problem still exists with this kind of idea of what the government of, of Somalia is going to be. And on that, I'm not optimistic. At the moment, it's very hard to be optimistic. You have some very, very deep divides in terms of the southern area of Kismayo and Jubaland, where they're trying to form a state, and the Mogadishu government is dead set against that. And there's been fighting recently in Kismayo over exactly that issue. They've they announced the uh, election of no less than three presidents for Jubaland, um, or three leaders. One sponsored by the, the Mogadishu government, another, another by the local clan militia, etc. So, you know, really looking at that picture, no, things are not optimistic, I'm afraid. But Somalis get on with business, they get on with life, and they've done that for, for, for the, you know, decades, oh, well, for a thousand years. So they will continue to do that. So I think in some ways you can, you can look at individual bits of Somali horn, and you say, yes, there's room for a lot of optimism. But politically, at the moment, no, I'm not optimistic about the um, successful establishment of a government in Mogadishu on the current model that is going to gain legitimacy. In but a huge yeah. amount of Somali talent available to go back and... An enormous engage. amount, yeah. And the business community is thriving. There's yeah. a lot of, you know, there's a lot of really um, good, well-run businesses that, that work very effectively um, and really belie this kind of idea of, of Somalia as some kind of anarchic failed state. But the state function at the highest level, that's what's failed. At the local level, there's, there are administrations and there are, there are functioning systems and, and um, social contract-based um, form, forms of law that are administered run on a day-to-day -day basis very effectively. Michael, thanks very much. Thank you.